Hey guys, I'm Blitz Stage. Let's discuss the solutions for problems A, B, and C in today's contest. So the contest is uh, code forces around seven ninety four. Let's discuss the solutions for A, B, and C. So the first problem is uh, pretty interesting. So it says that uh, what we can do is we can have n minus one elements and uh, we can find their average and set their value equal to their average. And we want all of the n elements to be equal. So what we can see that these n minus one elements are anyways going to be equal. So the nth element should also be equal to them. So the nth element should be equal to average of the other n minus one elements. And if it is equal to the average of other n minus one elements, the total average should also be the same average because if average of one element is x and average of n minus one other elements is x then the overall average will also be x so we just want to find a number uh, who whose value is equal to the average value so just implement it we just find the vector read it find the sum if it the sum is not divisible by n then the average is a non integer in which case we cannot have an answer if the average is an integer we just find the average and if a is equal to average we say yes Otherwise, we say no. I think I'm recording. Yes, 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 yes. Everything is fine. Okay. Yes. So this was the solution for the first problem. It's fairly simple. Let's move on to the second one now. Uh, just a second. So the second problem. Yes. Okay. It. This one is interesting. So the point here is that um, everyone we know what an inversion is. So in a particular subarray, if the number of inversions is odd, then it's called a Odd array, and we want to divide our array into multiple subarrays such that number of odd subarrays is as large as possible. So I I got confused in this problem a bit. Like what my uh, what I where I was getting confused was let's say if I have like two three four and then one. Uh, I was also thinking of a greedy approach. So I was thinking we'll go from left to right. Whenever we find a odd subarray, we will just uh, stop at that point and then uh, continue forward. But what I was thinking was if I just have two three and then one. So just adding this one would give me like two inversions. So I was getting confused over here. But it turns out that you can do an interesting thing here over here. You can just pick the very last number which is increasing and then pair it up with this guy. So you don't need to consider two. Let's say we had like minus one, minus uh, minus uh, zero, minus one zero. We had such numbers. So you need not have all of these four inversions or these three inversions. Just consider the very last guy itself. And for all of those which are in a proper order, which are in an ascending order, we can just form a whole group by themselves. And only the first time where we get an uh, a number which is la larger than its uh, the number ab uh, after it, we can just have these two as one separate pair. We do not need to consider all of these elements which are increasing. If we do this, if we just consider one element and the next one which is smaller than it, we are guaranteed to have just one inversion, and one is an odd number. So that is the approach we have to follow over here. So it's pretty interesting. So I read the array, uh, and what I do is I start from the second element, and if it is uh, uh, smaller than the element before it, we can just pick the bef the element before it and the current element. And since uh, I and we just increment the answer over here we also have to increment i because if there is a case like uh, let's say we have 3 to 1 so we just want to we want we just want okay just a second i'll just get rid of this okay we just want 3 and 2 to form a pair but then we don't want 2 and 1 to form a pair because 3 and 2 are already in one pair so we we have to just have i plus plus just increment i one more time so that these both pairs do not get counted and then just submit the answer so that's a pretty interesting problem. I got confused by it a bit, so, uh, but it's fine. So let's look at the C problem now. So, okay. Okay. Let's look at the C problem. Okay. C problem is also very interesting. I found it to be pretty interesting. So the point is that, uh, we have n elements a1 to a n. We want to arrange them in certain order such that e either element is either a strict valley or a strict hill. Let's uh, make some observations on this first. So one, one observation is that, uh, let's say element a of i is a hill. Then I have some other elements a of i minus one, a of i plus one. These elements have to be valleys because the condition is strict over here. You cannot have equal to So if this is strictly greater, this is strictly smaller. So we have to have a structure of hills and valleys, hills and valleys, hills and valleys. So we'll have a structure of hill, then valley, then hill, then valley, then hill. Now, if n is odd, 
so at the end since it's circular we also have to connect these two points so if n is odd we have to connect two hills which is just not possible like one hill ha has to be taller than the other hill so both of them cannot be hills so if n is odd then your answer is just uh, it's just no so i have implemented this condition if n mod 2 is equal to 1 just implement a no otherwise i'll if it's even let's try to think of what we can do if uh, it's even okay hmm. just give me a second to clear all of this stuff Okay, so if it is even, the point is that um, let's say we have six elements a1 to a6. So let's just try to sort them in a descending order. So this is a a1 is the largest element, a6 is the smallest element. So what we want to do over here is that we have a1 over here, a2 over here. Uh, we'll just keep one spot in between for a valley, one more spot for a valley, have a3, and then one more spot over here. And then uh, these three elements also should, like this element should form a valley here also. Okay, so the point is that a one and a two are the like are the like the tallest peaks that we have. So, so what if we have even numbers? Uh, we can have like uh, n by two hills and n by two valleys. So it is only right or it's it's the most obvious that we can just have the largest n by two numbers to be hills. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, I'm sorting in descending order. So these are the smallest n by two numbers. So these are just valleys. And then the largest n by two numbers are just hills. So what we can do when we have the tallest, like when we have the tallest nodes which are supposed to be hills, we can have the tallest valley over here, like the tallest point which has to be a valley. This is because let's say I have like uh, one thing we can say for sure is that any element in a one to a three is is going to be greater than any element from a four to a six. The only problem comes at the point if these are equal to each other so let's say if a3 is equal to a4 and a5 and somehow you just do a3 a4 a5 you think that okay a3 has to be larger than any of the later elements and i'll just pair them i'll just make it a hill but that's not correct because a3 has a value equal to a4 and equal to a5 so we what we what we want to do is give ourselves the highest chance highest possible chance such that uh, we form an actual hill value sequence so what we want to do is when we have the largest two numbers we'll just put a4 in between them then we will add a3 over here, we'll try to put a5. So what we want to do is when, whenever we have the highest points which are supposed to be hills, we'll pair them up with the highest point which is supposed to be a valley. And hopefully it, it will all sort out. That's the whole solution. That's what we want to do. So what we are going to do over here is that uh, at every uh, even position, so this is i is equal to 0, i is equal to 2, i is equal to 4. Okay, this is coming in between, right? I'll just move it just a second. Yeah, so at even positions, we will have uh, a1, a2, a3 and at odd positions, uh, we will have a4, a5, a6. So you can just write it as a formula. So what you know is that uh, uh, b0 is supposed to be a0, b1 is supposed to be a4, b2 is supposed to be a2 and uh, so on. So in general, the generalized formula that I get is uh, b of i uh, is equal to a of i over 2 and b of uh, for uh, i even and if i is equal to odd i just get a of n by 2 plus 1 plus i by 2 i is odd right so you can just write it as like i plus 1 by 2 you can just like work work through a few examples and find out that this is the exact formulation that we want um yep so since it is odd, we can write i plus 1 by 2 as i by 2 plus 1. Because like in C, in C plus plus i by 2 is just basically floor of i divided by 2. Now once we do this, we are still not sure. Like if we just have an array of like 6, 6, 6, 6, it's, it's just not possible that uh, some elements will be hills and some elements will be valleys. So this is, we have tried the best possible solution which we could. Now we just have to check if it works. Now to check if it works, we just iterate through all of our uh, possible hill positions. So basically, uh, where were we? Hmm, just give me a second. Yeah, basically we were like at this point, right? So, so we iterate through all of our hill positions and check if they are actually hill positions. If all of these are actually hills, then all of these will actually be valleys. And if that works out, our answer should be yes. And if it's not possible, like at some point a hill has to be equal to a point of a valley even with the best method we tried out 
then our answer has to be no so that's what we check we just check at every hill if it is fine if it is not we just say no otherwise we just say yes and we just print whatever our uh, vector b is so i think yeah this should be the answer uh, and solutions to problem a b and c thanks for watching hello everyone i am mantra and now i'll explain the d problem of this round so i'll just briefly read the statement uh, the statement is that we are given a string and four integers a b c d where a denotes the number of strings with just a b denotes b denotes number of string with just b c denotes number of strings with a b and d denotes number of string with b a and we are asked if we can use these strings and concatenate them in such a way that we can create the string or not if we can create then print yes else just print no so problem itself looks very simple and uh, at first when i saw it i tried to do something with uh, abcd and trying to count the number of occurrences of ab and number of occurrences of ba in the string and do something with it but it was not actually working out and then later i realized the logic so let me try to explain first one example so i'll just check i'll just take this one I'll copy this let me increase size so that it's visible that is it should be fine let me just increase it yeah okay it still didn't come increase so i'll have to increase it manually only just wait a minute yeah so this is the string that is given and we are supposed to construct it from 1a so let me just mention here 1a 1b 2ab and 3ba right so let's try to create this if possible so i can see 1ba here okay there are two more ba here and ab ab here yeah so i think i got it so a plus b a plus b a plus b plus b a plus a b plus a b so this is for example the answer for this is yes because i can use 1 a 1 b 2 a b and 3 b a so the logic for this is uh, first you can just directly check if the string is possible or not so what i mean by that is uh, just check the lens of all the given elements and if it satisfy or not so like I, I'll just count the number of a and number of a should be a plus c plus d right so I'll just check if number of a is that and number of b is b plus c plus d if it is not then I'll just return directly so now this ensures that I have sufficient and necessary number of a and b's in my given string so if I am able to satisfy criteria of c and d then I can satisfy A and B easily. Whatever uh, capital A and capital B are left, I can just, you know, give small n, small b according to that. So now my main focus will be just uh, satisfying C and D. If I can use this many number of A, B and this many number of B, A to construct S or not, like somewhere in the S or not. So for that, what I first figured out is how many strings are definitely capital A, capital B and how many strings are definitely capital B, capital A. So for that, so I'll take this example only because in this one string is there which, which can just be, so just fall, uh, focus on this string. So while processing that, this string, this, this part only has potential to become BA. So it can't be AB and here also there is a B. So it must be one BA from this. So like I, I can at least make one BA here and I can 
for sure make only b i can't make a b from this part whereas if, if you see this string here you can see i can make either three a b's a b a b a b or i can make two b a's this b a and this b a so i'll first divide the our given string into sub strings which are made of uh, alternating a b a b a b because if there are same b b b b so if I, for example i add more b's here these two b's have no option but to you know come from small b so this b's we can remove and focus more on the strings which has potential to come from uh, c or d because that's what our main focus is if we can somehow fit c a b and d b a in our string as or not so for that uh, i'll just go through code with this only so that it's more understandable yeah so for that i'll just make a vector of string v and i'll make a string temporary first it has just s of zero first character and then i'll go through the string and whenever the same character the character is not equal to previous character i'll just append it in temp and whenever it it is it is same as previous character i just push back the current temporary string in v and clear the temp and push back the current type and at the end also i'll push back temp and then sort all v so what this process did is it uh, it it uh, created a different substrings of given string such that each substring must have alternating characters so if there are some bb bb here then it will transform this string into a b a b a b we'll stop here b b b b a and a b a so this will be my vector v it will store this a bunch of v's then one b a and this so the benefit that i get after doing this is first of all i can just separate small b and small a's because uh, uh just single b and single a's because i don't care about them one more advantage that i get is I am able to separate the strings which has potential just to become B A and just to become A B. So, for example, if there was a B here, then my process would have separated it like this, because this string has only potential to be A B, and I am able to separate it out. So after this, what I'll do is I'll count how many just B A and just A B are in the vector, and those will. Uh, have potential just to become a b or b a so i'll just subtract number of them from c and d and after which uh, and i'll ignore this single letter characters as well because we don't care about them so after which i'll be left with all the strings that have either odd length uh, or even length and they'll have alternating a b a b a b so i just add one more b a b a or it can have a b a b a so total majorly there will be four types of string left one odd length starting with a odd length starting with b even length starting with a and even length starting with b one nice thing if you notice about odd length strings is if you are given a bab then either you can transform it into ba plus b or you can transform into b plus ab Mm, similarly if i focus on high length hot string here you can do either a plus 2 bas or b plus or b plus uh, or let me just erase this or 2 ab plus b i hope you get the idea so what i'm trying to say is any odd length string from that you can generate exactly the length minus 1 by 2 ab or ba and one nice thing is they can come in uh, any possible way so for example from a file length string i can make 2 0 combination i can make 1 1 combination or i can make 0 2 combination so they can create all possible ways so any odd length string it's just we can just store the information that how many you know a b or b it can store so just len minus 1 by 2 we can store this somewhere and that will be useful to know that how many a b or b a can be created but uh, the thing about even string is 
one even string starting with length a can either give three zero combination three a b or zero b a or if you want to get one b a then you realize that you are wasting the first a and first a can't be paired up with anyone so your potential to make strings reduces from three to two so if there is at least one b a then total string will only be generated by it is two so three zero one one or zero two are the combinations that you can make from a three length even uh, six length string starting with it so again repeat uh, if i repeat this for ba ba if i want two bas then i can get two bas but even if i want a single ab i lose potential to make one more matching so for that it will reduce to one zero so example if length is n uh, and n is even let's assume so i'll just make two n then I can make n zero. Mm, if I do one here, uh, let me just erase this. Even if I try to make one string of this, I lose one potential string. So this will reduce to n minus two. And if I make two of this, then this will be n minus three, and so on. So after uh, classifying this way and figuring out a, b, and b, I have basically got a structure of how to create string a b and how to create string b a so now i just have to check if there is some way that i can create this such that c and d are both satisfied number of string a b are greater than c and number of string b a are greater than or equal to b so i'll just again go back to code and explain the process so far uh, so i've created to uh, one variable any which just stores that the string can either be a b or b a any of them fsab is for sure a b fsb is for sure b a and i have to create a two vector of string a b and b a to, to to store specifically even length string starting with a b a b in vector a b and even length string starting with b a in vector b a so these are my vectors and what i'll do is i'll just iterate through the my current vector v which stores all the different substrings and if any of them are odd then i just do size of i by 2 i can do minus 1 by 2 but it's odd so it doesn't matter i'll just do that into any because those can be generated into any of a b or b a but if size is even then i have two cases if size is equal to 2 then i can generate only a b for sure only a b if uh, starting is a and if starting is b then i can only generate b a so this was the case that i explained when there is a single b a in between somewhere then you can do it only uh, you can use it only for b a so that's why this is there but if size is not equal to two, then you can potentially create b a out of uh, string a b a b but you'll use one of your a b's for that so for that i'm storing them into a b and b a according to the initial character and after that i know for sure a b and for sure b a right so i'll just subtract them from c and get the updated value of c of d because this string was for sure a b so let's just decrease c by that because we utilized for sure a b uh, a b strings from c so i'll just decrease that and d and if if they become negative which means uh, you already got the solution for at least c part if uh, for example if c becomes zero then it means we we were able to utilize all c strings of a b so we are already good so i'll just capping them at zero so okay for next part let's just first i'll tell you uh, first i'll tell the case where c is greater than d so let me just go down so the case where c is greater than d what should I try to do? So I have a vector AB containing all strings with AB AB and of even length. I have a vector BA containing all strings of even length and containing BA BA. And I have any which which stores the number of strings that I can generate, which can either be AB or BA. So if C is greater than D, then my first thought should be to utilize a b vector to generate all the strings of form capital a capital b if possible 
because if I use BA, then I'll lose potential BAs as well. So this is like optimal thing to do. So what I'll do is I'll go through the AB vector and I'll check if uh, uh, if a string I is there, uh, for example, AB AB equal to I, then we know that you can generate size of I by two strings of AB from it, right? Because it, it is repetition of AB AB AB. So I'll just check if generate uh, utilizing this current string is, uh, you know, giving, uh, making C zero or not. If it's not making zero, then I'll just subtract it from it. If it is making it zero or less than equal to zero, then what I've done is I've completely made, uh, I'll completely utilized all the string of AB. Uh, so all the C, C strings of AB are utilized. So now my, my main focus should be utilizing all the strings of form BA, which are uh, in D number. So what I'll do is whatever strings are left in the AB vector, I have to transform them into all form, all BA, BA, BA. Because that is the optimal thing to do now because we have used utilized AB. So the best thing to do is make all the BA possible. And if all the BA that are possible are greater than or equal to D, then we are done. So for that, you can just in this iteration where C is becoming zero, I'll just figure out how many B I can make. And for each string I, the B I I can make is size by two minus one. So that's what I explained here. Uh, if a size is four, then I can make AB AB at max uh, size by two. But for if I want to make BA BA BA, then max BA will be size by two minus one. So, but I'm subtracting C here as well because currently C is not zero. So C, uh, C number of strings will be used to make capital A, capital B and other this minus one will be used to make capital B A, capital B A. So I'm just doing max of zero LL because it's possible that this can go negative. And I'll just add last variable to I, which stores the info. If I was able to make all the strings of type capital A capital B from just AB vector or not. So if I was able to make then last one be minus two. So let's just go to that case one first. So if last is not minus two, then I'm done with uh, capital A capital B part. And I just have to make capital B capital A strings as maximum number of times as possible. So the optimal thing is to, you know, start from last plus one index in vector AB and make all the strings of for sure be a possible. So they are size by two minus one, as I explained earlier, then add all the strings of any in FSBA because any can be converted to uh, any of AB or BA and we are done with AB. So I'll just make all of them to BA and then iterate through BA vector, which stores the even length string of BA, BA, BA and uh, add size of I by two for uh, each of those strings. Because if the string is from BA, BA, then you can make size by two strings of BA. Again, because it is concatenation of BA, BA. So after this, you'll get the maximum number of BA that you can form from current string. And if this number is greater than or equal to D, then you, you'll be able to utilize all the D string, uh, all the D capital BA, cap, uh, capital BA string in our string S. So if this is the case, then I'll just print yes, else I'll print no and I'll, and this is done. But if last is equal to minus two, which means even after uh, utilizing all the strings in the vector AB, I still have some number of capital A, capital B strings to make. C is still not zero. C currently stores how many capital A, capital B I have to make. So what is the optimal thing to do now? We have utilized AB vector. Should I go for BA vector or any? So again, optimal thing is use any first rather than directly going for BA vector because when you make AB from BA, you are losing potential BAs. You are using one BA for every string you use to make AB. So I'll first try to use any. So if C is greater than any, then again, my all any strings will be utilized. Still C will be left. So I'm doing the same process again. Uh, just that I'm going through BA vector and I'll try to make as many AB as possible. 
and as I've explained before, when I'm in B and I'm making AB, it will be size by size minus one by two because you can't make all the pairs. You have to, one one of them is lost. So again, this is similar process to here. If subtract is this from C is uh, making it greater than zero, then just subtract it. Else, I'll just uh, add all the remaining strings to for sure be a because after this. Uh, after this if sum of the after making a b of this string if some potential b's are left in the current string and c becomes zero then i'm i have to utilize them for making b a so i just do this my by two minus c because i've utilized c strings to make a b so whatever is remaining will be used to make b a and i'll update last two i and i'll break out of this so after this uh, last will store the index of the string which i used last to make a, a b capital a capital b and all the string from last plus one in vector b a will be used to make capital b capital a and so if if c is less than any then i i'll just subtract c c from any which means i'm done with capital a capital b now my only focus should be capital b capital a so remaining a b must be added to for sure b a because i i want to make as many b as possible and i'll just set last to minus one because now complete vector b a is utilizable for making b a so last plus one is setting zero so i'll just go from zero but if last is minus two which means i iterated through this and i still wasn't able to you know update last to the index that is so I, I still wasn't able to make all the a b possible i iterated through all vector b a i made all possible capital a capital b but still c is larger i still can't make any more a capital a capital b and i i have no resources i exhausted a b first then i used any and i also went through b a so now there is no way to make capital a capital b and so i i won't be able to utilize all the c strings so i just see out no and return but if this is not the case then i'll just iterate through cap uh, ba vector from last plus one to uh, the end and i'll just make as many ba as possible and this is ba vector so the number of strings is just size by two because again ba b ba concatenation and after that fsba stores maximum number of for sure ba strings that we can make and if it's greater than or equal to d then i just print yes i'll print no so one thing to notice is i have initialized fsb equal to zero again from here because all the fsb that were before if for example it was larger than d and d becomes zero then uh, here this condition will always be true so it will anyway see out yes that's why i've just resetted fsba to be zero here because if ba is something then i i've used all the fsba to subtract from d so example five and three so I've used all the FSBA that were here before. So I have to reset it to zero. And so I explained this when number of C is greater than number of D because I should make as many, uh, I should utilize as many AB as possible through AB vector, any, and then BC. But what happens when D is greater than C? And then I drew similar process, but for D. So I should use BA vector, make as many capital B capital as possible, then use any, and then use a b vector to make uh, capital b capital a so that is covered here if c was less than d then i'm just swapping c d and swapping b a and here you'll one more crucial thing to realize is why which string should i use first to make capital a capital b if i've exhausted a b vector so for that this example is very apt the one that i chose at the start so I'll just go there. Let me just copy this. I'll paste it here. Yeah. So the initial example was A B A B. Decomposition was like this, right? Let me just go back and verify once. So string was a b a b a b b a and then a b a b yeah so let me just go through my algorithm here once so you can understand it more 
so here this is my vector v this is for sure b a so i'll just subtract this from d and this becomes 2 2 now c is not less than d so i'll just try to make as many a b as possible so now there are two cases i can either make a b from this string or make a b from this string so what happens if i start making a b from this string you will realize that i'll be using two a b's to make two a b which satisfy the c and the last a b will be completely lost so that is gone and now i only have a b a b string to make you know all the necessary b a's and i have to make still two b a's but the thing is from a b a b i can only make one b at max which would be a plus b a plus b what happens in the other case though if i use a b a b first to make a uh, number of a b's then i'll be making two a b's and i'm utilizing a b a b completely and after which i'll be left with a b a b a b string and i have to still make two b a from it but the nice thing is we can actually make two b a from it with a plus b a plus b a plus b so here a thing to notice is whenever i'm making a b from a b vector i should use as small string as possible and the reasoning for this is if i'm using a larger string to do this then there is a potential that i'll be using i'll be losing one of the uh, one of the capital b capital a that i can make from the larger string so as you can see in this example if i use this to make two ab then i can make only one ba from this but if i use this to make two ab then i can make two ba from this so like you can prove this that in general it is it is more optimal to use the smaller string to make all the abs possible and from this you will realize that that's why i had to so that's why i have i have so, uh, so this i have sorted vector v right so it is an increasing order of length so ab is sorted that's why and ab is sorted so i'll using it properly but you can see one more line here b a is actually reversely sorted and the reason for that is so this was in support of ab right capital ab i'm making capital ab from vector ab so for that i should use small string first and then slowly move on to larger string so that can be like understood easily what happens if i'm using if i'm using vector b a to generate ab which string should i use first smaller one or larger one so here you can see that if if i'm using smaller strings to generate capital a capital b then if a string b a b a is there and like i'll just again do similar example to explain so if i'm using this to generate ab then i'll get one ab and then i can get at at most three bas so this is one of the cases and if i'm using this to generate ab then i can get uh, two ab's and two bas two bas from this two ab's from this so i i don't know which one is uh, greater for now so if i have given opportunity to you know make ab from string with ba ba then i should use the larger strings first because even if i you know for the smaller string one cost of ab is actually taking one ba but in larger string uh, we are able to make one ab and three bas or you can you know decompose three ba to be one ab and one ba so what we are doing is making one ab from this string one ab from this string so effectively we are losing two bas right because one ab actually costs one ba so what you should do is make as many ab's as possible in as least string as possible so the more string ba ba we are left the more bas we can generate 
so it is optimal to use the larger string to create ABs so that you are using minimum number of strings to create AB so that all the remaining strings will be used to generate BA and they'll give you know one extra BA you won't have to lose one BA to generate one AB so that is what basically happening that's why I have to reverse sort this so that in vector BA the initial strings are of larger length and slowly length is decreasing so I'm using larger length string to generate capital AB capital AB capital AB rather than using you know small length string because each string that I use to generate AB I'm effectively losing one BA so if I can do this in minimum number of strings possible I'll have most number of uh, BAs possible in there so yeah this was the complete solution I know it was a bit long and like it took a lot of time for me to think as well there might be some easier solution as well if we get an any then we'll try to post it as well so but I hope you understood this if you if you got any question then you can just put in comments and I'll take a look at it so yeah thanks for watching and do like share and subscribe